Hello, YouTube. So I've got a question from a friend of mine, uh, J.R. Chadwick, saying that he'd seen some of these articles saying that there was a very low risk of getting infected by COVID from touching surfaces. And there's been you know, a lot of uh, news articles basically echoing this point here. The risk of infection from touching a contaminated surface is less than 5 in 10,000. And you go to the original article and less than 5 in 10,000. Now, you have to take all of these studies with a pinch of salt because there are intrinsic problems in trying to assess things like this. Uh, the, the sheer intrinsic problem is can be seen by just how long it took mankind to discover viruses in the first place. In that, really, the only evidence that a virus exists until you get an electron microscope is that people seem to get sick and it seems to be contagious. And it's only when you get these things under an electron microscope that you find these things called the viral particles. They're tiny. This is your sort of typical cell. The virus particles are tiny compared to the cells. The cells you can just about see under an optical microscope. The virus particles you don't have a bat's chance in hell of finding under a, a regular microscope. So what happens is and you, you can now see these various parts of the life cycle uh, under, um, yeah, you infect a bunch of cells, then you freeze them, stick them under the electron microscope. You can see all these various parts of the life cycle such that, you know, the virus particle sticks to the your, your cells and injects some RNA into it. And then it basically hijacks the machinery of your cell to make more virus particles. And in respiratory viruses, which is what we're talking about here, those are coughed out. Now, and you know at some point that because the virus spreads that those coughed out particles are getting into other people. But working out how that actually happens is kind of fuzzy. Because like I was saying, it's really difficult to identify viral particles. So one thing that you can do is you swap down surfaces and you basically look. There are very sensitive methods for testing for the virus RNA. You know, this is what these PCR tests that they do for testing for coronavirus now rely on. So you can do tests like that on surfaces, but... That's maybe not as useful as you might think it would be in that these virus particles are fairly fragile. And so when they're coughed out, they have to be surrounded by water, at least some water or concentrated sugars or something. It needs something on the outside. You, exp you expose these to just regular air and that kills the virus. They, they desiccate. It destroys their ability to get into other cells. But the RNA is still exactly as it was before. It's just that if you put it into your body, that RNA has no way of getting into the cells. Uh, you, all this stuff around the outside is a vital part of the virus life cycle. So you destroy these little um, bud, um, um, capsid, capsid type things that the virus has come in, that's it, they, they're done. However, when you cough these out, they're going to be, you know, they're going to mucus and all sorts of other crap with them, which whilst that might desiccate fairly well, <clears throat> a lot of the goopy stuff can sort of encapsulate these things and keep them viable. Uh, but when you're doing the testing on the surfaces, you don't really know whether this was just coughed out and it's desiccated and it's a dead virus or whether it's coughed out and it's it can still have some potency if you were to, you know, lick that surface, that sort of thing. <clears throat> now, there are tests that you can do where you basically try and infect some other cells. So you, you swab the surface and then you give it some cell cultures and you see which one of the cell cultures get infected. Uh, but you know these all these all take like uh, 
couple of weeks to run and it's it's fairly um secondary data uh, you, you never get really clean answers out of these virus studies and it's for exactly these reasons that you can't just um see the virus and even if you could you only need a few particles to actually kick off well this is another thing this is a thing called viral load um and it's it's how many or uh, what are deemed to be virus particles you need to cause an infection um again a lot of these things are there's a degree of fussiness in a lot of these things so these are the intrinsic problems that you have so what this study did is it went through and it looked at a load of surfaces that this is the crazy thing uh we conducted longitudinal swabs of highly touched non-porous surfaces this is again actually really quite important uh, you get pores in surfaces and all of a sudden stuff doesn't really dry out that well in pores in surfaces so uh it's conceivable that the virus could remain in those for a much more extended period of time but what, what they what they mean when they say highly touched non-porous surfaces they're talking about uh metal door handles that sort of thing during the outbreak in april to june 2020 30 percent of the uh, 29 out of 300 10 percent or so of the surface samples were positive uh for the rna now this is where again where you got to be careful right positive for the rna well, that doesn't mean it's positive for active viruses, right? So if someone coughs on the surfaces and they desiccate, all the RNA is still there. Uh, it'll test positive whether the virus particles are active or not. Um, and eventually, uh, through some analyses, and reckon that the chances of infection from when touching a contaminated surface was low, less than five in 10,000. Now, I mean, uh, it, it's so difficult to actually pass what this means because when you say less than five in 10,000, uh, you're, you're including all surfaces there. So if someone's just, someone who was highly infected just coughed on their hand and opened a door handle, then obviously your chances aren't five in 10,000 there because when someone coughs this stuff out they don't just cough out one or two of these virus particles they're coughing out millions to billions of them right there's a reason that viruses have stayed with us as a well <laughs> stayed with life for four and a half billion years and it's that they're tenacious little buggers and whilst they might not be terribly sophisticated i mean you get a rough idea of how sophisticated they are from the amount of dna that they have yeah, this is your basically your cell. This is like a little a rogue component of a cell. There's almost nothing to it. But uh, when you get a viral infection, you can create sort of millions and trillions of these things, um, and it keeps on going until your until the cells die or your body starts killing the cells. Which is yeah, this is kind of what makes you sick is all the cell death. Um, and if there's enough of it then obviously it gets on top of you and it kills you um but yeah the point is that when you are infectious you can cough out a lot of these virus particles so you you've got to be careful about um yeah numbers like these um in terms of uh Is it prudent to try not to touch surfaces and to keep them clean? Yes. Um, it's one of those things, you, you just really can't get a sensible estimate because there's no way of measuring it. How many people were infected from coughing in the vicinity of someone else? How many people were infected by coughing onto their hand then shaking hands with someone something like that um but there's something else here that i wanted to cover 
Uh, yeah, so risk of infection and touching contaminated surface less than five and ten thousand. Lower than infections, uh, SARS CoV 2 through aerosols. Okay, we didn't really say how much lower, but again, how do you parameterize these things? You know, it all really depends on uh, how infected the surface you're touching is compared to how infected the air you're breathing is. Um, and lower than surface transmission for influenza and whatever, uh, no row virus. Again, these are sort of um, relative terms. So um, I'm not entirely convinced by a lot of these things. So th this is actually an article from WebMD that went with those the, the, these articles. Um, and this is their opinion where they say, in my opinion, the chance of transmission through inanimate surfaces is small, is very small. And, uh, but is this one of these things where it's small in aggregate or it's small from just touching one surface? Um, and only in instances where an infected person coughs or sneezes on the surface and someone else touches that surface within one to two hours. Well, that's almost all public spaces. That's almost every door handle. That's uh, almost all surfaces on metros and subways and that sort of thing. Um, and you, you could say exactly the same thing. Uh, your, your chances of transmission are low um, if you're only near infected people for short periods of time or you keep your distance and all that sort of thing. They do actually come down, later on they say that, um, here we go, wearing a mask when you're around other people is a proven protective strategy that can cut your risk of getting uh, COVID by 65% uh, or you know, putting distance between you. Well, yeah. Um, and, and it, <laughs> this is the bottom line. So it's still a good idea to wash your hands. Right? With the, the important thing there is the soap. Uh, soap is a surfactant and it destroys the viral capsids. Um, so yeah, uh, even though uh, they, they come out with these numbers of five parts in 10,000 of um, getting the virus from touching a surface, I'm not entirely sure that's a useful number. And anyway, so that's my opinion on that. Uh, the best way, of course, to avoid a viral infection is to avoid contact with other people. But yeah, this is kind of the same thing. It's saying don't touch surfaces and don't go where, uh, if you're going where other people are breathing, wear a mask and all that sort of thing. Anyway, so hope you found that useful. Um, if you did, Drop a thumbs up on it, and I will see you next time, and uh, thanks for watching.